when when I'm approached about like, let's talk about influencing for good, right? Influencing others for good. Do you know that you're constantly being watched? Like people are always watching us, trying to decide who we are, right? And you can think about this. You know, you and I do it too, to other people. But think about the people that you respect the most, right? Or people maybe that you admire the most. What are they like, right? I bet they make everyone their friend. I bet as we look through this together, the next few minutes that we get to spend, there it's through simple things that you are influenced or we influence others. Now, think about those that you admire their testimony, right? What are they like when they're not sharing it? What are they like? Now, this was profound for me when we talk about influence. Do you realize that there are people that only you, only you can reach? Only you and I can reach certain people that are in our lives in this moment. There are people right now that you can steer for good. There are people in our lives that are praying for a friend. There are people that are praying for to be heard. They're praying for a testimony, to feel love, to feel the spirit. But here's the catch. And President Kimball taught this many, many moons ago. Check, check. Sing on. Listen with your spiritual ears. He said, God does notice us and he watches over us, but is usually through another person that he meets our needs. Let's go again. God does notice us and he watches over us, but it is usually through another person that he meets our needs. Story time. Once upon a time, I, I, as you heard, I, I live in Utah. I grew up in Utah. I was told, listen, you're going to get offered drugs. You're going to get offered to smoke. You're going to get offered all these things in and of the world. And I'm happy to report that for the most of my schooling, like junior high, high school career, that was no problem. Like I was heavily involved in music. I liked to sing. I did choir. Well, the day came that all of their, <laughs> all of their fortune telling, their future telling came true. And I'm a senior in high school. I have a friend, let's call him Adam. His name is not Adam, but let's call him Adam. And we went over to a pair of our friend's house. We went to a friend's house and these two friends, they sang in choir with us, but they weren't members of the church. Adam and I, we were in the same, same stake. Like we we're good. We're friends. We go over there and all of a sudden they pull out some contraption that they're like, let's do some drugs. Let's smoke some drugs. And I'm like, let's not. I decided a really long time ago that that was not going to be my problem. From that day to this, I never, I never had to touch the stove. I never had to touch it when they were like, look, drugs are hot. Don't touch them. I'm like, okay, I never had to touch it. And I'm grateful for that. Right. All my problems are, I have other problems. Like I got, I got lots of problems, but there are other problems than that. And I remember sitting there and they were like, do you want to try this? And I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And then they offered it to Adam and like I, today, this, to this day, this has profoundly impacted me. I freeze in that moment because I've, I've said, no, I'm fine. I got it. And I look over to him and they ask, they ask him, they offer it to him and he goes, and I can see the wheels spinning. Like all he needs me to do is be like, put that away, boys. Let's go back and work on our quartet. Let's keep singing. Let's keep doing this, that, or the other. I freeze. I say nothing. And I watch as Adam's like, all right. And he takes it. He smokes it. And I watch him just almost in disbelief. He's like, <coughs> like, it was terrible. I'm sure that he was not, he was like, huh? Like I, I would have rather stabbed myself in the face with a fork. Like that was not an exciting experience, but I remember feeling very dark in that moment that, um, that A, I didn't stand for what was right, right? It wasn't necessarily my choice to make, but I could have been very influential in that moment. Even, and, and I still could have been cool. Like I could have just been like, yeah, guys, we're not doing that. Let's just, let's get some cookies. Cause look, you don't have to ask me if I need to get some cookies. I'm always down for cookies. And instead I don't. So fast forward, fast forward years and years and years. I run into Adam again and Adam looks a thousand years old. Adam has like life has beat Adam up. 
Like he is just, he's just chosen a different path. And I think because for whatever reason, right. And it's always the little things. It's all the little choices that we make that add up to the thing that's like, how did I get here? How did I get so far off the path? Um, and as I saw him, like I was warm and I expressed that I, I missed him and I love you and I hope things are going great. And, but my, my real challenge was a part of my soul hurt, like the lesson I have to learn as I watch that who knows where he'd be today. Maybe he'd be in the same place. Maybe he would. Or maybe all he needed was a little bit of muscle to lean on, somebody to just go, dude, we're good. We're good without that. Like, let's go throw snowballs at cars. Let's go do something else, something illegal that's still fun. Like, you don't have to just, no, drugs is not the answer. So when I see him, I, I'm reminded painfully of this moment that I, I now share this story like with my kids the night before school starts all the time. Like everything about going, be the friend that is okay to say, we don't have to do that. Now I do have a confession. I have a confession, downer story. I get it. I'll bring you back. I'll stay with me. Stay with me. We got this. I have a confession. I'm now an influencer husband. That's right. Like I live with a camera in my hand. I am an influencer husband because I have a beautiful, famous clothing designer wife that was not born a member of the church who actually came from a home that was broken since she was very little. And when she found the gospel, she grabbed onto it with both hands. And it, ha it has had such a profound effect on her life that she has made it her life and company mission to make women's lives better. So I get to watch firsthand how influencing someone for good can change people's lives. Now, I've watched her serve those that follow her. She's done big things like charter semi-trucks full of food and supplies to Texas when they froze their nanes off last year. Some of you will remember that. And I apologize. Like I said it, nanes. I'm saying it like shh, the language. I get it. Let's, let's try to stay with me. I've seen her hand deliver one of her beautiful dresses to a mom who had lost a child or a wife who lost a husband. And I've learned that influencing someone for good has nothing to do with being famous or being an influencer or doing it in front of a bunch of people, right? Influencing someone for good is about asking him to lead you because he will. Remember, he loves us. He loves me and you. He always loves us. But here's the kicker. Can he trust you? He loves you. Yes. Can he trust you? Quote, it is usually through another person that he meets our needs, close quote. A woman wrote my wife last year and told her a story of how she fell away from the church, chose a path of drugs and alcohol, ended up in prison. She had been, she'd been out just over two years and had been following my wife on social media. She told her that it would that as my wife openly shared her testimony about the savior, this woman felt something and she recognized it. What do you think she felt all together? That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly what she felt. She felt the spirit. Now she recognized it, even though she hadn't felt it for a long time. She said it was so cool to see that it could actually be cool to follow Jesus. She immediately started taking steps in his direction. She met with her bishop. And a few months later, she wrote my wife and told her that she had just purchased one of my wife's temple dresses, right? She bought one of the temple dresses because she was going back. She was headed to the temple for the first time in her adult life. Ah, it's so awesome. This was so awesome. I remember, I remember my wife telling me the day this happened. So my wife praised her. And then this woman wrote, she said, <clears throat> I don't know that I would have had the strength to do it on my own. Even though you don't know me, I want to invite you to join me in the house of the Lord. It was one of my wife's greatest honors to see someone draw near unto him because of her testimony. We both went that day and got to watch her receive her endowment and go through the temple. And it's just a beautiful young woman. Like she had tattoos. She looked like that well, you might go, hey, this, this feels a little rough, but she was glowing. 
glowing. The Spirit is the teacher. Pray to hear what he needs you to know as you serve, and you will influence for good beyond anything you can imagine. You will have experiences and joy that you can know in no other way. Whether you have your own testimony or not just yet, I want to share this with you today that you can lean on mine. I want you to know that I know it. I know Jesus is the Savior. I know that we are constantly being watched, even inside your own home. If you have siblings, if you have brothers and sisters, if you're the mom and the dad, you know they're always watching. Learn to listen to the Spirit. Ask to hear what you should do because it's through others that He answers our prayers. Be ready, listen, and most importantly, do what you hear. And I share that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.